Hi. Today we're looking at the Dyson Kinetic Big Ball Animal Plus Allergy Upright Vacuum Cleaner. Now Dyson presently has three kinetic machines in their stable. There's the Dyson Kinetic Animal, which is a canister vacuum. There's the Dyson Kinetic Big Ball, uh, which is pretty much the same machine as this, uh, except it has four less tools and doesn't come with the um, tool bag. It's also identified by having purple cyclones here. This, the uh, Dyson Kinetic Big Ball Animal Plus Allergy, has these nickeled color cyclones, so you can easily identify it by that. Now the machine is, um, I suppose, a little revolutionary, a little new. It's bagless, but it requires absolutely no filter maintenance. Now some people feel that's because it has no filters, and that's not entirely the case. It, it has no pre-motor filters. Um, but it has a post-motor filter. It's just that that filter is designed to last the lifetime of the vacuum, so you have no filter maintenance. Um, this is a full-size vacuum. Uh, it's hefty. It, it, it weighs 19.8 uh, pounds, so that's on the high side, of, certainly of some of the uh, uprights we've looked at. It has a 35-foot power cord, which is really very long, so that's, that's a great feature. It has whole system uh, HEPA level filtration. Uh, that's good if you've got maybe someone in your family with asthma or, or allergies. And it comes with a whole host of tools and attachments. Dyson vacuums use cyclonic technology. And this indeed is the technology used by most bagless vacuums today. It essentially involves a cyclone, which is like a cone-shaped device. And the air enters the cyclone and is spun around very, very rapidly. And centrifugal force pushes the dust and debris to the outside and more or less off into the dust canister. Now here we've got the Dyson DC65 animal. You can see this purple layer here of cyclones above the dust canister. And if you look at the size of these cyclones and you compare it to those in the Dyson Kinetic, these are much larger and the Kinetic are much smaller. And that kind of leads us into this discussion of Dyson Kinetic technology. Um, the really small cyclones generate much faster spinning air and therefore more centrifugal force and you get uh, smaller and smaller particles being taken out of the airflow. Um, this results in particles uh, being removed down to 0.5 microns and therefore this system doesn't have a pre-motor filter. Now one of the things uh, we understand the Dyson engineers ran into there was when you've got a really small cyclone, the tip of that is also quite narrow and you can get dust and stuff stuck in there. So what they've done is uh, they, they've got a system where those um, cyclone tips are actually oscillated at 350 times per second, essentially shaking out any dust and debris. Now some people have said, well, what, how does that work over time? And Dyson report that they've run 10 years of dust through these things without any appreciable uh, loss, loss in suction and we can only assume that means that the tips of those cyclones are not being clogged. The dust canister on the Kinetic is fairly large at about 0.57 gallons. It's not much different than over here on the DC65 animal. This is 0.55. They're both fairly large dust canisters. To remove this, there's a red button on the top. Press it down, it comes off real easy. Press the button again, bottom opens up, dust and debris comes out, goes into the trash bin, and close it up, and then this thing back onto the vacuum cleaner. Probably one of the main differences, I guess, between these two is the fact that this has no filters to maintain. Over here, you've got two filters to maintain. Probably about every three months or so, you've got to take these out and you've got to rinse them in water, let them dry for about 24 hours and put them back in. So over in the um, dust canister, we've got a filter here. Now we've got another filter to maintain here, and that's in the ball. This is a bit more of a pain to get at, but again, once every three months is hardly the end of the world. This comes off, we've got this filter here, and this too is washable. Same deal, 24 hours, and uh, make sure it's completely dry before you put it back together. It's not, once you've done it a few times, it's not that big a deal. And so you've got, there, there's your filter maintenance on the DC65. Again, nothing over here, so probably one of the main differences. 
As mentioned, the vacuum comes with a host of tools, and there are actually seven. You can see them here. Now this is the combination crevice tool dusting brush. It's essentially a crevice tool, and you can extend the brush to the end and back. You've got the stair tool. Now both of these will fit onto the vacuum cleaner. You can store them on the vacuum. Kind of click into place, and they store, they're quite, uh, quite sturdy there, they don't come off. We've got the Tangle Free Turbine Tool. It has counter-rotating heads. We've actually tested this uh, tool before. It works well on things like thread and then string and hair. Of course, if you, if you, use, if you, if you run it over elastic bands or some bigger rope kind of material, you can bind it up. We have the multi-angle brush. Now, this is, this is a good device if you're, if, if you're, for example, trying to do the tops of bookshelves or something, perhaps overhead cleaning. You can put the, um, the wand in here and move this back and forth over the top of a bookshelf, for example. Now, the throat of this uh, can be turned in all sorts of different angles, as can the head. So, you've got all sorts of different configurations there. You've also got the mattress tool. Looks a little like a a large stair tool, and indeed it can be used on the stairs. Good for mattresses and upholstery. We have the soft dusting brush, and it's got kind of soft velvet on the outside and this fine layer of carbon fiber here. And we have the flexible reach under tool. This is a, a little bit different. This tool it looks like an, uh, a long crevice tool. It's got a brush on the end. If you, you can take the brush off, you can put on this interesting looking device, which is like a, kind of a dusting brush itself. Pops onto the end. Now when you, ex you can extend this tool out, and this, this is a little bit unique. This is a piece of rubber, and it allows the tool to flex. And you can see how, for example, if you're trying to get under a couch or something, you might uh, move it back and forth, you know, something like this. And the only thing with this tool we notice is indeed if you extend it the whole way and you try to go on too tight an angle you can get a buckle in here and that's going to block off your your suction so sometimes a bit of an issue. Now all of these tools fit into the handy tool bag provided by Dyson. It's actually got pockets in it and a big area to put all the tools. We essentially just throw them all in here um, but it's a it's a nice uh, a nice feature and handy because there are so many tools here. The machine has a pretty respectable cleaning reach. You've got the 35 foot power cord here, and Dyson claimed that the hose and wand assembly will stretch out to 15 feet. We put a tape measure down here. We're going to extend this thing out, and we're going to pull it back to the point where the machine starts to tip. And we'll see what kind of cleaning reach we've actually got. Okay, now we're probably right about there. We're looking at about a full 14 feet to the end of the wand. Now that's a foot short of what Dyson have told us, but these hoses do tend to stretch out a little bit over time. So we wouldn't be surprised to see 15 feet at some point. So with a, thir with a 35 foot power cord, let's just say 14 feet on the hose and wand, you got 49 feet of cleaning reach, which is quite substantial. Also, 14 feet here is pretty good for most overhead cleaning and for doing a decent set of stairs. Now, this isn't called the big ball for no reason. You can see the size of the ball here. And one would assume that that's larger than normal because it's giving you some kind of advantage. Now, if we step over here and pull in, for example, the DC-65 Animal, you can see the ball on this unit is smaller. So, if we want to look at maneuverability, we're going to move this around with our wrist back and forth. It's fairly maneuverable. Feels a bit heavy in the wrist. The DC-65 is it's just simply easier to move. Is it because the ball's smaller? Is it because the uh, machine's a little bit lighter? I'm not sure, but I was expecting some kind of advantage to the larger ball, and to be honest, between the two, 
I find the DC-65 animal easier to move, despite the fact that it's got the smaller ball. This vacuum has a motorized brush roll and only a few controls. Here we can see the vacuum power on-off, and on this side is the uh, brush roll on-off. Now, when this machine's in the upright position, even if the brush roll controls are on, the brush roll itself won't spin, and that's there to help ensure that the carpet doesn't get burned. Um, so let's just try that. If we turn the power on, now you can see as soon as we tilted the machine back, the brush roll engaged, but when we put it back in the upright position, it turned off automatically. Now we've taken the nozzle off of the kinetic to show you this active base plate, and that's this accordion-like device you can see here. Um, this allows the whole underside of the nozzle to essentially go up and down. Now this is great when you're moving from carpet to bare floors uh, for example, or from bare floors to carpet. You don't need to manually adjust the height. This does it automatically. This also doesn't allow a suction to escape around the perimeter of the nozzle, and it helps focus the suction on the floor where you want it. I've just compared the noise level of the Dyson DC-65 animal and the Kinetic Big Ball Animal Plus Allergy. We're not going to do that here, it's just too much fiddling back and forth, but I have the results. And we've used a, uh, an audio meter here that measures decibels. So the DC-65 in idle mode was 75.3 decibels. The kinetic in idle mode was 73.6. And you can actually hear the difference. It sounds like they're quite similar, but I'll turn them both on in idle mode and you'll probably notice the difference. With the brush bar on, the DC-65 animal was 79.2. With the brush bar on, the Kinetic was 76.2. So the Kinetic is a quieter machine. Now let's just check the, uh, the idle mode and see if you can notice the difference. That's the DC-65 animal, now the Kinetic. For us here, the, uh, it's, it's fairly obvious the Kinetic is, is indeed quieter. We're going to do a quick test on carpet. We've got some fine lentils here, some much heavier beans, and some Fruit Loops, which tend to be lightweight but bulky. This is a low pile carpet. We're going to run the Dyson DC-65 Animal, and then we'll run the Kinetic. Um, both of them will have the brush bar on, and what we're going to do is just one pass and stop and take a look and see what's left behind. Well, there's a debris field left over from both vacuums. I must say I'm a little surprised at that. I expected the DC-65 to perform a little better. You can see that the Kinetic had a tendency to push some of the finer material forward and it wasn't quite getting under the, um, the nozzle, but overall it did okay. We decided to run the one-pass carpet test again to see if the results were repeatable.
In this case, you can see the debris fields are a little more similar in terms of amount left. Although on the kinetic side, on the right, um, we still get that uh, amount of material pushed forward. Um, we've actually done this test four times. You've seen two. The reason we did it a few times was we would sometimes see the DC-65 perform better than the kinetic. Sometimes we see the kinetic perform better than the DC-65. Overall, the tests are showing how well the machine, machines perform on one pass. But the one constant was that we did get some of that debris pushed forward on the kinetic. Now we're just going to run the vacuums and pull up all the debris and see how well they perform. As you can see, both machines perform really well here. Of course, if you go back and forth a number of times, it's quite a bit different than doing one pass. Um, they picked up virtually everything, no problems at all. We're gonna run the vacuum on bare floors now. Now we've got some of the, the lentils, we've got some of the heavier, some heavier green peas here. We've ground up um, some of the Fruit Loops, so there's a fine powder into the cracks, just to make sure that it could pick up into the cracks. The, um, kinetic, the Dyson uh, Big Ball Kinetic, has 180 air watts of suction. Now, the uh, DC65 Anima has 245, so it's quite a bit more. We'll be running this with the brush bar off, so it'll be just relying on its suction, although we don't expect it to have any issues with this, but let's just see what happens. Well, as expected, it didn't have a problem from a suction point of view. We still see a couple of these guys showing up. This um, nozzle is still pushing the larger debris forward. Now we've ground in some pet hair. This is fairly long white dog hair. And we've ground it into what is more a um, medium pile carpet. We've, you know, we've jumped up and down on this and ground it into the best of our ability for both machines. And we're gonna run the DC-65 Animal, again against the Kinetic, see how they perform on the, on the pet hair. Well, from the look of things, both pretty similar. They did a good job. I know that the hair sometimes has a, a tendency to really tangle up the brush rolls here, so let's take a quick look. <clears throat> yeah, you can certainly see it here. This is actually fairly normal. We've tested a lot of vacuums on this particular hair. Now the brush roll here, I think, comes out, and it's probably also, this is quite easy to pull off as well. Let's take a look at the DC-65. Pretty sure it's about the same deal. 
mm, you know, clogged up as well. Not, not too bad, but same kind of, same kind of thing. Now another test we often do is to check the ability of the machine to clean up tight against the baseboards. You know, if a vacuum won't do that, you may end up having to get out a crevice tool and the hose, or maybe um, the hose and a hand tool of some kind, and that can be a real pain. So let's check out and see how the Kinetic does. Okay, I didn't drag anything back behind the nozzle. Um, that's an excellent result. You will not be stuck having to uh, dig out a crevice tool or a hand tool or anything else to do tight up against the baseboards. This is the DC-65 and we expect it'll yield similar results. And the answer to that is yes, yes it does. Now one of the things we noticed with the Kinetic when we were um, using a, a tool like the crevice tool on a bare floor was that if this uh, crevice tool, if the end gets too flush to the bare floor, that pressure relief valve in the vacuum kicks in right away. And that tends to limit the suction at the end of the tool. Now that's there in case you've got a clog or something so it doesn't burn out the motor. But it seems to kick in a little early. Over here on the DC-65, um, indeed it has a PRV as well, pressure relief valve, but that kicks in later and it allows more suction to get to the end of the tool. Um, so we'll try to illustrate that. We're going to turn one vacuum on then the other. It's not an easy thing to show, but you'll, you'll hear that. Uh, PRV kick in. And let's just see if that becomes apparent. So we'll start with the uh, DC-65. Yeah. got a lot of suction. It's very hard to pull it across. You'll hear that PRV kick in there, but it doesn't seem to be right away. Now let's try this on the Kinetic. Pretty much as soon as I touch the paper to the end of this, that, that PRV kicks in. Um, now it doesn't happen all the time when you're using tools, but uh, when something gets a little bit flush to the end, uh, it just seems to kick in uh, a little prematurely. One thing we find a little annoying about both of these machines is the need to click the handle into place to put it back into the upright position. And if you don't do that, the handle just falls back down. You've probably seen in some of our carpet test videos when we're pushing that whole machine forward because when it's running you can't actually hear the click. So this is the DC-65, move it forward, wheels go down, that wasn't the click. If we let go it falls down. Move it forward and there it is. And then you're okay. Now the Kinetic actually clicks into place a little easier than the DC-65 so that's, that's good. But it has the same issue, really. Here, wheels down, nope, wheels down, then there you go. Now to summarize, some of the things we liked about the Dyson Kinetic, it came with a host of tools, um, a whole bag of them here that cover almost every cleaning eventuality. It has a long cleaning reach. We measured uh, about 49 feet. That's the uh, hose, the wand, and the um, power cord. There's no bags to buy and in addition there's absolutely no filter maintenance. It's also not too loud, which is, which is nice. Um, cleaning performance 
is good on our tests on carpet, on bare floors, on pet hair, and even edge cleaning, it performed quite well. Now, on the downside, we found it heavy. It's 19.8 pounds, and that heaviness also translated into difficulty in maneuvering. Um, it's a little bit hard on the wrist. You could feel it on carpet. You could also feel it on, on the bare floors. We also found the, the pressure relief valve to be set a little low, and it, it kicks in early on um, maybe when you're using something like, you know, the crevice tool up tight against something. It, it's not a big deal, but when we compared it to the DC-65, we did find um, it could limit suction in, in, in some instances. This active base plate, it's a good feature. It, it's handy for, uh, you know, transitioning from carpet to bare floors and back, but uh, the fact that it keeps, keeps pushed down on the floor surface sometimes has a tendency to push debris forward. Um, getting debris out of the dust canister. Now, we, did, we didn't actually run into this, but we've read a number of people, a number of consumers complaining about this. It does get very tight up in here, um, and it's hard, it's almost actually impossible to get your fingers into there, and stuff can get clogged up there. And a number of people um, have complained about that. Um, well, the other thing is clicking it into upright mode. Uh, both the DC-65 and this have that kind of annoyance where you can't, you know, you don't quite know whether it's going to sit upright or not um, until it clicks in. And the other thing, it's expensive. On, on Dyson's website, we, I think the MSRP on this is, is still $699, although you can find it uh, less at uh, some online retailers. Now, we did some comparisons against the DC-65 animal. And, you know, in our cleaning tests, both machines fared pretty similarly. Now, we know the DC-65 animal has 245 air watts compared to this with 180. And that's a 36% difference. It's quite conceivable if we had ramped up the clean test with heavier and heavier debris, um, we would have seen that extra suction come into play. But the facts are, with the kind of stuff we were looking at, and perhaps with a lot of household debris, we didn't really see a difference between the two. Now we know the DC-65 is more powerful. It's also lighter. It's 17.4 pounds instead of the 19.8, and that makes it a little easier to move around. It's also slightly less expensive. Um, the Kinetic, on the other hand, is um, it's a quieter machine, and it also requires no filter maintenance. So, you know, while the Kinetic technology is quite an accomplishment, you really have to give serious consideration to whether or not it's worth the high price, um, especially when you stack it up something to, to something like the DC-65 Animal. So the, uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. The, the kinetic technology is it's good technology. Um, whether or not Dyson is going to move in the direction of refining this technology. You know, what, what we've got right now is really the first set of models. Whether they're going to take those and refine them and refine them into something better and better, or whether this whole idea is, is going to disappear, we don't know. I guess time will tell. Thanks for watching.